I have not yet been to see Joker. And I don't think I'm going to bother. I'm not boycotting it or anything. I just find I have no desire to go and see this movie. Now, this may come as a surprise to some of you. If I'm honest, it comes as a bit of a surprise to me. This is the kind of movie you'd think I'd be all over. So I've been trying to think about why it is that I don't want to see this movie. And I think it boils down to three things. So I'm going to talk about those three things. And then afterwards, I'm going to tell you about the movie that you should see instead of Joker. Or as well as if you already saw Joker. Three things that make me not want to go and see Joker. Thing one, it's all a bit obvious. On the one hand, the idea, what if Martin Scorsese made a Batman movie with no Batman in it in 1981, is a pretty decent idea for a movie. But there's got to be a better way of paying tribute to the brilliance of Martin Scorsese than just mashing together the plots of Taxi Driver and King of Comedy. And then, just in case anybody out there didn't get the reference yet, bunging Robert De Niro in to play the Jerry Lewis part this time. You see what we did there? Huh? You see? Do you see what we did there? I mean, it is a bit like somebody explaining at length to you how a joke works and then telling you why the joke's going to be funny and then cracking the joke and wondering why you don't laugh at it. And yes, there's nothing wrong with emulating your heroes. Creative people should emulate our heroes. It's how we get better at what we do. But there's a big difference between emulating your heroes and just imitating your heroes. Imitation and emulation are not the same thing. I seem to spend most of the 90s trying to explain this to Oasis fans. Thing two, the writer-director's being a bit of a dick. Now, the writer-director of Joker, Todd Phillips, is, of course, better known for the Hangover trilogy of bawdy comedies. And when asked recently in an interview why he'd switched from comedies to doing serious movies, he said something along the lines of, there's no point doing comedy anymore because woke culture makes it impossible to be funny. <laughs> oh, Christ, how utterly tedious. Look, woke culture, which is apparently what whiny arseholes have decided to start complaining about now that political correctness gone mad is no longer an acceptable term, does not make it impossible to be funny. It might make it a bit harder to be funny, but how is that a bad thing? If the downside of trying to make the world a better and fairer place for everybody is that it makes it a bit harder for assholes like me to come up with zingers, then that's a price worth paying. And indeed, it's a price I happily pay every day. And yes, yeah, sometimes you fuck it up. It can be difficult to keep up with evolving attitudes and terminology. And I blow it sometimes. Sometimes I cross a line that I had no idea was there, or I use last year's word for something. And as often as not, somebody will point it out to me. And if they do it politely, I'll say, whoa, okay, sorry, didn't realise what was the problem with that, and they will tell me, and I'll say, okay, thanks for the heads up, I'll try not to do that in future. And if they're a dick about it, I tell them to fuck off, because I don't engage with dicks, not even woke dicks. Now, it is, of course, possible that Mr Phillips was misquoted or quoted out of context, in which case I apologise to Mr Phillips. And it is also true that even if he meant every damn word of it, that doesn't make Joker a bad movie. But it is indicative of the mentality that produced the movie, and I'm not sure I want to spend two hours in the company of that mentality. I mean, Roman Polanski made some of the best films of all time, but it is still quite hard to sit through them once you know what he did. Which, in a weird tangential way, leads me to Thing 3. Thing 3. That fucking song. Now, in what has already become the most iconic moment in Joker, it's in the trailer, it's on all the posters, the newly transformed Joker, evidently in a state of post-homicidal ecstasy, dances down this long, filthy staircase to the strains of Rock and Roll Part 2 by Gary Glitter i.e. Britain's most notorious surviving child sex offender. Now, I understand the reference they're going for here. There is a weird tendency for this bit of music to be played at American sporting events at moments of triumph. The home team scored a touchdown! The star batter hit a home run! So I get what you're referring to. But here's the thing, that's not okay either. Now, I realise that that bit of music has been played at American sporting events for a long time, since before it all came out about what kind of person Gary Glitter is. But it did all come out about what kind of person Gary Glitter is. And ever since then, we Brits have been trying to explain to Americans why maybe it's not a good thing to play that music at sporting events, but we just don't seem able to get them to give a shit. Now, here's the thing, America. I realise that you are the only real country in the world and the rest of us are just a bunch of quaint little theme parks. But just imagine, if you will, that the top-rated TV programme in every other country in the world was The Cosby Show. Still, now, The Cosby Show. And every time you went anywhere abroad, there were at least two TV channels showing The Cosby Show on a loop. And you'd be like, seriously? The Cosby Show? And everybody else was like, yeah, we love The Cosby Show! And you were like... But you know what Bill Cosby did, right? And everybody else was, ah, pfft, fuck off, you miserable bastards. It's funny. It's a Cosby show. We love the Cosby show.
Now, I understand that Gary Glitter has long since forfeited any kind of publishing interest in that song, and as such, you won't be making any money from its inclusion in the movie, which is good. But that's not really the point. The point is, we just don't really want to be reminded of him. I mean, there are people alive in this country who are actually molested by that guy back in the 70s. Now, I find it more or less impossible to believe that the intensely problematic nature of that bit of music never came up at any point during the pre-production, production or post-production of the movie Joker. Which means at some point the active decision was taken to leave it in. Either to be tiresomely provocative or just because they didn't give a shit. And frankly neither one of those attitudes is anything I want to reward with my hard earned. But you know what? If the thing you feel you really need in your life is an intense and atmospheric thriller that's kind of an unofficial remake of Taxi Driver, featuring an incredibly compelling central performance from Joaquin Phoenix. That film came out two years ago, and it's fucking brilliant, and it made a fraction of the money the Joker's making. The film is called You Were Never Really Here. It was directed by the astonishing Scottish filmmaker Lynn Ramsey, who also directed We Need to Talk About Kevin, possibly the most compelling and disturbing movie I've ever seen. Unlike Joker, it stars Joaquin Phoenix, albeit completely unrecognisable. He's kind of squat and stocky with a big beard in this and he hardly says a word in the whole film. And plot-wise owes a fairly substantial debt to Taxi Driver. It's not like a remake. In Taxi Driver you have a lone weirdo who takes it upon himself to rescue a little girl from sex traffickers. In You Were Never Really Here you have a lone weirdo who is hired to rescue a little girl from sex traffickers. But it's an amazing film that went largely unnoticed. In fact, Joaquin is so good in this film, I wonder if that's where they found him for Joker. But this is an amazing film. It's engrossing, it's immersive, it always shows, it never tells. And in an age when almost every film I see blows the ending, this film nails the ending. But yes, yeah, see this film. Seriously, it's on DVD, it's on Amazon. And you know, go see Joker as well if you didn't already. I'm not here to try and talk you out of it. And by all means, feel free to talk me into it if you think I've got the wrong end of the stick. Anyway, that's going to do it for now. Thank you very much to those of you who have been to see me on tour so far. If you haven't been to see me yet, have a look at mitchben.com slash gigs. See if I'm coming anywhere near you. All right. Bye-bye. This video was made possible by the supporters of my Patreon project, who helped me make fun things while receiving great perks and rewards. If you enjoyed it, why not follow the link and join us?